Good evening. This is Tuesday, September 9th, 56 days until the 2008 presidential election. If the Republican strategy behind the selection of Sarah Palin as John McCain's running mate was to distract voters from McCain's sellouts and tone deafness, it is working. Perhaps, however, not in the way the GOP thought. The governor again today claiming, again, that she sold the jet on eBay when she didn't sell the jet on eBay. Again today claiming that she fired the chef when she didn't fire the chef. Again today claiming that she fought against Alaska's bridge to nowhere when she was four, then against, then redirected the money from that monumental, a monumental piece of pork. Again today claiming that she controlled spending when in a stunning example of self-interest over state interest. She actually billed Alaska nearly $17,000 for nights that she spent in her very own home. Our fifth story on the countdown, the myth of Sarah Palin being revealed to be just that, a carefully constructed story of somebody whose existence is widely believed in, but who in reality is largely or entirely fictitious. The Washington Post reporting that the vice presidential candidate has as governor charged her own state of Alaska per diem expenses for the nights she spent in her own home at Wasilla, a charge intended to cover meals and incidentals while traveling on state business. The governor's spokeswoman saying that under state policy, because Palin is based out of the governor's mansion in Juneau, legally she did nothing wrong. Quote, the governor is entitled to a per diem, and she claims it. But the former Democratic governor of Alaska, Tony Knowles, telling the Washington Post, quote, I gave a direction to all my commissioners if they were ever in their house, whether it was Juneau or elsewhere, they were not to get a per diem because clearly it is, and it looks like, a scam. You pay yourself to live at home. When he was governor, Mr. Knowles also signing a bill that saw to it that law enforcement agencies in Alaska would pay for the processing of the rape kits used to collect forensic evidence in sexual assault cases. However, the police chief of Wasilla, when Palin was then mayor, appointed by her, was staunchly against that. Wasilla's, Wasilla's policy was blame and bill the victim. Governor Palin's apparent other policy, reward those who go from critics to supporters, or is the better word here, bribe. Last week, Major General Craig Campbell of the Alaska National Guard, having told the Associated Press that, quote, he and Palin play no role in national defense activities, even when they involve the Alaska National Guard. By Friday, the Major General praising Governor Palin on fixed news, saying that, quote, National Guards are state military forces run by governors, and Sarah Palin does it great. By yesterday, Major General Campbell, promoted by Palin, to Lieutenant General of the Alaska National Guard. Coincidence, no doubt. The McCain-Palin campaign today launching a so-called Palin Truth Squad to counter recent so-called attacks against her. Fifty-five members of the squad, nearly every one of them women, yet the majority of the lies on the campaign trail today coming from Governor Palin's own mouth. The attacks launched by her against Senator Obama. First, let me tell you something about the choice in this election. Here in Pennsylvania, we just don't quite know what to make of a candidate who lavishes praise on working people when they're listening and then though turns around and talks kind of how bitterly they cling to their religion and their guns when those people aren't listening. We tend to prefer candidates who don't talk about San Francisco. Time now to call in Shannon Moore, a host with Alaskan Progressive Talk Radio. She joins us tonight from Anchorage. Ms. Moore, thank you for your time tonight. Thanks for having me. Specifics first. Do we know whether uh, Mayor Palin supported that police chief's blame and bill the victim rape kit policy? I mean, beyond her having already told us that being mayor is kind of like being a community organizer, except that you have actual responsibilities? Well, I do know that I spoke with Eric Croft, who actually authored that bill, and the reason that bill was authored to make it illegal for a municipality to charge for a rape kit was specifically for Wasilla. And after that uh, bill was passed because it just seems terrible. I mean, I live in a state with the highest amount of incest and rape in the country. Mm. That uh, it, was, it was specifically designed for Wasilla. And the, the police chief came out and said, wow, well, that he thought it was terrible to pass that on to taxpayers. The, uh, the story about the stay-at-home per diem, is there a difference here between something being legally wrong and the appearance of what seems ethically wrong for somebody who is setting themselves up campaigning as a small government fiscal conservative maverick? Well, I've always found it ironic that people want to legislate ethics. Either you have them or you don't. And in looking at this, she's really had her cake and eaten it too. I mean, we've never had a governor live outside of Juneau and people were understanding about her wanting to use her Anchorage office more, but it, it really goes to show exactly why uh, last, last spring in the legislature, people were wearing yellow buttons, legislators were wearing yellow buttons that said, where's Sarah? It's very, uh, well, 
it sort of reminds me of the Crawford Ranch scenario, not really at work. Uh, what is the, the, the picture that was painted by the media in the days after uh, Governor Palin was selected seemed to be uh, uh, 700 some odd thousand people in Alaska and like 32 who did not like her and the rest were all right behind the, her on the Sarah Palin team. Um, is, there, is there more division in Alaska than we've been led to think? Well, I'm waiting to get put on the endangered species list, <laughs> frankly, uh, being a, a liberal in Alaska. And um, I'm sure you run in the same circles at times. Um, you know, the fact that this Friday we've got $3,200 coming into each uh, bank account of every man, woman, and child in Alaska is really, you know, that's part of the popularity. But certainly uh, the charm of Sarah Palin, I mean, I've called her for over a year now Governor Gump because she is so likable. I, I've interviewed her, um, you know, I've talked to her, I've seen her in action, and she's likable. But is, is this back to the whole idea of I'd like to have a beer with him so I'll vote for him? We're uh, we're finally apparently going to see the governor condescend to talk to uh, to television reporters without uh, just repeating that same speech that she gave in in Minnesota. What would you? And we're not really holding out much hope that these questions are going to be asked. But what are the questions that should be asked of her in this first national interview? Well, I I certainly um, I think this in light of her views on environmental policy, in light of her views when it comes to uh, her fundamentalist beliefs in her insular sort of group of people around her, why, why doesn't she uh, explain how she's different than George W. Bush? Because the practices that I've seen and her policies are very, very, very similar. And that's not change. I'm sure it'll be the first question asked. Uh, Shannon Moore of Alaskan Progressive <laughs> Talk Radio in Anchorage with us tonight. Great thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you, Keith.